The Goofy Movie from 1995 is an often overlooked classic in the Disney Renaissance musical pantheon, including The Lion King, Aladdin, Beauty and the Beast. It sits right there in the middle of that decade. It follows the exact same structure musically and story-wise as all of the Renaissance classics, but I think it does one better in that it subverts the way that the songs are used in that traditional structure. Now, the format of these Disney Renaissance musicals mostly follows the same six-song structure. Sometimes there's a few here and there that are added, but the six primary ones are the opening number, the I Want song, the Villain song, the Everything's Fun song, the Love song, and the finale. The opening number for these Disney musicals helps establish the world and tone of the story. The Lion King's Circle of Life does this super well but it doesn't really show you a ton about all the main characters and their motivations and where the story's headed. Similarly with Aladdin, you get Arabian Nights and that's just over the credits and you get a lot of nice texture of sand dunes. Goofy has After Today and we get the opening number with Max singing about high school and what his life is like. What it does a little bit differently than the other musicals is it also includes that second song that's in all of them, the I Want song, the main character's motivation. And we get some of that in the opening number as well with Max wanting Roxanne and not wanting to be just like his dad, Goofy. So it has a perfect blend of getting both of those in right away. Gonna talk to Roxanne and not feel like a fool. What is different about the Goofy movies I Want song is we've already gotten some of Max's I Want in the opening number. So why do we have another I Want song in Stand Out where he's singing to the high school? The two things that it does is it adds a layer of nuance to Max's character because it's not just that he wants it to be the day after today and school to be out. He also wants to stand out and not be like his dad through doing something. The other wonderful thing that it does is add the fact that we are going to get musical numbers sung in the plot of the story. It's not just extraneous to the story. There will be music sung and it factors heavily into the climax in the final number. So we're getting two things in one. The next point in the story where there is music comes the villain song. And for Lion King, it is Be Prepared, Scar singing his heinous plans. We've got Gaston with Beauty and the Beast and how, what a horrible person he is. Right around this time in the Goofy movie though, we get On the Open Road, which is Goofy singing about what a great time he's gonna have with his son. And this is crazy, but this is the villain song right where we expect it for a Disney Renaissance musical because Goofy is ruining Max's life as he knows it. He is taking him on this road trip and it is a horrible experience, absolute hell, everything that Goofy wants to do and it shows in Max's face, but just wild that this is the antagonist's point of view at this point in the Goofy movie. Could someone call a taxi and get me out of here? At this point in our journey, the hero has reached the fun song, which is an exploration and excitement of the new and fantastical world that they found themselves in. For Lion King, we have Hakuna Matata, Beauty and the Beast gives us Be Our Guest, and Aladdin gets the genie's zany friend like me. What's Amazing and completely different with the Goofy movie is our expectation is for our hero to be in some hopeful situation for what's to come. But Max gets a song that is performed uh, by characters in the story. It is a musical performance of Lester's Possum Park by some hideous animatronic possums. And this is a nightmare. This is the opposite of where we'd want our hero to be now. It is not a fun song at all, but it is a subversion of our expectation of where the hero should be. Ah oh yes, the love song is next. The classic Grammy-winning platinum songs. Lion King's got Can You Feel the Love Tonight? Aladdin has Whole New World and Beauty and the Beast has Beauty and the Beast. The Goofy movie changes it up completely because where is Roxanne? Nowhere near our main character on this trip. Who do we have? The villain. The villain who sung the villain song. And the love song we get at the time where we expect it is between Max and Goofy because it is a father-son love song and not a romance love song. Upending our expectation of who's supposed to be singing with who and who's falling in love with who at this point in the story. It's nobody else but nobody else but you. 
We've made it to the end, the finale, the final song, which takes place after the climax, when the antagonist is defeated and all is well. We have Circle of Life, we have Beauty and the Beast, and a whole new world. They're usually really popular songs, sung again, but happy. Goofy does something wildly different. It doesn't have a finale song because it pushes it back to the climax where the protagonist is defeating the antagonist. This is crazy. You can't imagine Simba singing to Scar as he's throwing him off the cliff or Aladdin destroying evil Jafar genie with a musical number. But it works in this case because the antagonist is goofy and it is eye to eye. It is lip syncing on stage. It is dancing Goofy's number. It is the defeating of the villain through connection, through both of them learning to love each other and to stand out in their own ways. I always loved the Goofy movie. I was able to watch it at the perfect time when I was just the right age, when I was feeling all the feelings Max had about his parent and uh, wanting to stand out. And I think it definitely gets missed in the Disney Renaissance classics. But as you can see, all the songs hit all the right beats and even subvert them in a way. But perhaps that's why it's forgotten in that pantheon of the greats. Uh, I'm grateful that I was able to see it right at the right time. And uh, yeah, it means a lot to me. So thanks for watching and catch you soon. Bye.